200 million years ago. Around that time Pangaea split up and Gondwana and Laurasia had to say goodbye. This was the time of the biggest theropod of the Lower Jurassic. The Italian super predator Soltrio Venator. When we think about the earliest of large predators in the dinosaur world, we might think of the Cryolophosaurus, Dilophosaurus or even earlier Herrerasaurus and Supaisaurus. All of these predators reached lengths of 4 to over 6 meters or 13 to over 16.4 feet and weighed up to 500 kilograms or 1100 pounds. These theropods lived from the Middle Triassic 237 million years ago into the Early Jurassic 183 million years ago. However, between 199.3 and 197.5 million years ago there was a predator, a tick longer than Cryolophosaurus and Dilophosaurus, but far more massive. This was the Soltrio Venator, a ceratosaur that dwarfed all predators at that time. This was a ceratosaur the size of an almost fully grown Allosaurus. <laughs> you serious? Soltrio Venator means Soltrio Hunter, referring to the municipality Soltrio in the Italian Lombardy. The authors and descriptors Dalsasso, Maganuccio and Chao also pointed out that Venator not only stands for hunter, but also a type of Roman gladiator. That's actually pretty damn cool. Because of the fragmentary nature of its remains, scaling up from Ceratosaurus itself is a good way to get an idea of how big Soltrio Venator really is. This resulted in a body length of 7.3 meters or 24 feet, a hip height of 2.2 meters or 6.7 feet and a skull length of 80 centimeters or 2.4 feet. If we take both hip-bone and thigh-bone scaling into context, the weight range is between 1.16 to 1.622 metric tons. The early Jurassic was a time when allosaurs were not yet around. Allosaurus. Gone missing! These were happier times for ceratosaurs for sure. Anyway, Soltrio Venator was found in 1996 in a quarry north of Milan. Soltrio Venator Sanelai was named in 2018 by paleontologist Cristiano Dal Sasso among others. Considering the fact that the Soltrio Venator holotype was found in the Soltrio formation, which contains a ton of marine fauna, it seems that the individual was a beach dweller or at least it lived in a coastal environment. An analysis confirmed damage to the holotype fossil being caused by marine scavengers. Oh no, I think I know what happened to the poor animal after it died. Soltrio Venator was perhaps also looking for bodies of large marine animals washed ashore. With Europe being a collection of islands in the early Jurassic, this seems to have been a common survival strategy for the larger theropod dinosaurs of the time in this area. Other genera such as Eustraptospondylus, Pivetaeosaurus and Dubriolosaurus among others are also speculated to have scoured beaches for food. Soltrio Venator's habitat, the Soltrio Formation, was home to brachiopods, bivalves, gastropods, cephalopods, echinoderms, some fish ichthyosaurs such as Ichthyosaurus himself, Hello there. the giant Temnodontosaurus, one pterosaur genus and the non-avian dinosaur Soltrio Venator. We also know that the found specimen was not an adult and therefore could have grown even bigger. We are not aware of so many giant pharaohs in Europe, but Soltrio Venator was definitely one and thus joins the ranks of predators such as Allosaurus, Torvosaurus, Neovenator, Baryonyx and the Eberospinus. What is striking is that all these predators lived much later than Soltrio Venator. The discovery of this Soltrio Venator specimen, which was estimated at a max of 1.6 metric tons and found to be still only a maturing juvenile, is downright astonishing to paleontologists, as theropods of this weight class are only found 25 million years later. Soltrio Venator had the typical characteristics of a basal ceratosaur, a short but bulky skull, lethal claws on its hands and a nasal horn. The fact that Soltrio Venator still had four fingers is pretty strange. Later predatory dinosaurs only had three fingers. Three of Soltrio Venator's four fingers ended in claws. The fourth and outmost finger however is shortened. The fourth finger of the pharaohpods first became smaller and then disappeared completely. Soltrio Venator's grasping hand 
fills a crucial gap in the theropod family tree. The three-fingered hand, as we know it from later theropods, as well as the wings of birds, later emerge from this humble beginning. Sorgio Veneto therefore not only provides us with insights into the evolution of non-avian theropods in the Jurassic, but also gives us theories about the development of the wings in birds. All in all, Sorgio Veneto was the greatest predator of its time, and probably the greatest predator of the early Jurassic. However, throughout the whole late Jurassic and early Cretaceous, Ceratosaurs were outcompeted in size per Allosaurus and later Carcharodontosaurus. If you don't believe me, you can just ask Ceratosaurus. Hence why Allosaurus always claps Ceratosaurus in every documentary. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! However, the Ceratosaurus made a comeback in the late Cretaceous, when the Abelisaurs took over a lot of apex predator niches in South America, Africa, Asia and Europe. This was one of the last great terrestrial predatory dominants in the late Cretaceous, amongst it Megaraptorans and Tyrannosauroids. I I thought you were dead. My death was greatly exaggerated. So it seems that Ceratosaurus hit the last laugh. So even now the Ceratosaur legacy lives on. That's it for the video about the Italian super predator Soldier Veneto. Like the video if you liked it, also subscribe so you don't miss anything. For more content check out the playlist as well as Twitter for more dinosaur stuff and Instagram for fitness stuff. Have a splendid day or evening and until then.